Well, I mean, I, I've been thinking a lot about women across the board, across our economy, across all of our communities as we struggle through the layers of crisis that we're dealing with right now. Um, I think all of us will agree that things weren't great for women going into the pandemic, <laughs> right? There were, there were certainly chronic crises that we were dealing with, everything from structural racism to the epidemic of low wage work where women were disproportionately concentrated in minimum wage jobs where you could work incredibly hard and not make ends meet, like not be able to put healthy food on the table for your kids, that was pre-pandemic. Right. And so if you listen now to women like domestic workers who are majority black and immigrant women of color, right, who are actually responsible for caring for us, and many of them have been working through this pandemic, they're in a situation where they came in without a single paid 82% of domestic workers didn't have a single paid sick day, right. And so we're, we were talking about dramatic losses of jobs and income, such that in early March, women were calling and saying, I'm worried about how I'm going to put food on the table. We had Zoom calls with women who would hold their phones up to the screen and literally to show us there was one cent left in their bank account. And that was in March, right? And so the incredible loss of income and the incredible financial insecurity that was created by an insufficient, uh, at best, safety net that just didn't keep women safe, women workers safe. That combined with the fact that the majority of essential workers are women and disproportionately women of color. So the people who have been keeping us safe and keeping our, our country moving are women who are working for poverty wages without access to health care without access to testing and treatment, without PPE, and their kids are home from school and camp. So they're, how, are, how are they supposed to take care of their kids even as they provide essential services for ours or for, you know, provide the lifeline for lots of older people as home care workers who are some of the most vulnerable people to the crisis. So I think women right now, we all know women are incredibly resilient and incredibly powerful. And what is happening right now is unconscionable. It is a humanitarian crisis of epic, uh, epic proportions. And, and that is why women need power. That is exactly why we, we have to transform our politics and our government and to have women who actually want to solve problems in charge. <laughs> um, and that is, I think, a lot of what Supermajority is trying to do is to harness the incredible creativity and resilience and strength of women that is too often expended on bare minimum survival, right, to unleash it towards building and creating the systems and the culture that we know is possible in this country and that we deserve.